My daughter is pregnant. How do I tell her that our older daughter is actually her biological mother? So I, 53 male, and my wife, 53 female, had our older daughter Sarah, 31 female, when we were 22. We were young and broke, but managed and now we raised Sarah the best we could. She got pregnant at 15. It was a very depressing time for her. She had to go to therapy and never told us anything about the father, which always upset her, so we never pushed the issue. She originally wanted to terminate, but kept canceling and eventually told us she wanted to give her up for adoption. But five months into the pregnancy, when she was discussing with a social worker for a couple to adopt, the couple dropped out of the adoption. After trying to find more couples, Sarah asked us if we wanted to adopt. Rose and I were both 30 at this point and we both had been discussing having another child. So we ended up adopting our daughter Ellie when Sarah had her at 16. Two years after Ellie, me and my wife had our son Logan, 13 biologically. Growing up, we always planned to tell Ellie she was adopted, but we knew with telling her that, we had to tell her Sarah was her bio mother. Sarah never became close with Ellie, not even as her sister. She moved out after the birth and lived with my wife's sister. She has always shown sisterly love to Logan, but never towards Ellie. There has always been conflicting feelings with Sarah. I have seen posts on Sarah's Instagram where she posted a picture of what was supposed to be the five of us, but Ellie was cut out. I confronted her about this and she says it's too painful. However, a couple of years ago, she showed up drunk, begging us to let her see her daughter. We talked to her and let her stay, but did not let her near Ellie since she was drunk. We found out from her husband that she had suffered several miscarriages and was told to consider a surrogate. She ended up doing that four years ago and has since had twins, Jack and Jill, three years old, who are biologically hers. Ellie has loved being an aunt to the twins and Sarah has encouraged this with Ellie and has been inviting Ellie over to her house for family time with Logan, who loves being an uncle. We have asked Sarah that in light of the twins and Ellie being close to them, wouldn't it be time to tell Ellie the truth? But Sarah keeps claiming she is not ready. Recently, Ellie came to us and told us that she is pregnant. This time, it is a completely different situation. We have met the father, he is a childhood friend of hers, and they decided they wanted to lose their virginities to each other. We had the talk with Ellie long ago, as we did with Sarah. We approached the situation calmly and have since met with the father and his parents. Ellie is insistent on keeping the baby. She is three months along. We have not told Sarah yet, and we do not know how to approach the situation. We don't know how she will be able to take it. My wife and I are considering telling Ellie the truth, but we need Sarah to be there. Well, I decided to just focus on helping out Ellie, who was four months pregnant. We didn't want to stress her out by telling her about the adoption yet. In fact, we know we should have already told her a long time ago, despite Sarah's emotions on the matter. It's not like we even knew the details on Ellie's father, so that would have been Sarah's talk. But we, as Ellie's parents, still should have told her the truth when she was younger. Ellie told family about the pregnancy. She has since told my parents, her boyfriend's grandparents, and then of course, she told Sarah. Sarah didn't react well, but told her she would support her. Of course, Sarah reached out to us after, very upset, but said she was ready to talk to Ellie. First about the adoption with us, and then said that she wanted to tell Ellie about her father alone. We sat down and had the discussion. Ellie was of course upset, but calmed down after a while. She of course had questions about her father. Sarah had that discussion with her. At the time, I didn't know what was told. And it was none of our business. But Ellie told us she knows who he is and said she didn't want to reach out, so we moved on after that. The other day, I got a call from my sister-in-law, Renee, 31 female, my brother's wife. She was angry and was asking what kind of sick idea was Sarah putting in Ellie's head. She started mentioning stuff about Ellie's adoption, so after I got her to calm down, she told me what happened. She claimed that Ellie had messaged my brother, Ethan, 32, and told him about the adoption and wanted to talk to him. This confused me because me and Ethan don't talk much. We were never really close because we are 21 years apart. He was my mother's late child and he always got along with mine and our sister's kids as they were all around the same age. Ellie only saw him on the holidays, so telling him about the details in her life didn't make sense. Renee explained to me that Ellie claimed that Ethan was her father because that is what Sarah had told her and told him that he was going to be a grandpa. I had to sit down for a while. I called Sarah and we had a long conversation. She told me that yes, it was true that Ethan is Ellie's biological father. Sarah and Ethan were close when we were young and they were only 8 months apart. Sarah says that when they went through puberty, feelings changed and that every time she went to her grandmother's, they would hide away from everyone and have their own time. Sarah was upset talking about this, but told me that he never assaulted her and that it was always consensual. She never wanted to tell me because she was ashamed of the fact that the father of her baby was her uncle. I have since talked to Ethan as well. He denied it to Ellie over text, but told me it was true. We exchanged a few words back and forth. Even if this was consensual, how could he sleep with his own niece? He had all of these reasons, but I wasn't hearing it. He knew of the pregnancy and being Ellie's father the whole time, and he never even bothered to step up to say anything. I have talked to Ellie about it. She says she was upset when she found out, but she always thought she looked like my stepdad's side of the family. 
It upset me when she mentioned that because honestly, I see it. It's pretty obvious now. I knew that Ellie favored whoever her father was because she didn't look like anyone on our side. But I never suspected Ethan. My mother and stepdad have found out and Ethan told Renee it was true. She has left with their kids to stay with her family. Ethan has tried to reach out to Ellie now, but I don't want her speaking to him. I'm still her father and I don't think she is safe being in touch with him. Ellie has shown no interest in talking. I asked her why she reached out to him before talking to Sarah or us about it and she said that she just wanted to know his side of the story but feels betrayed for being lied to. Am I the asshole for leaving my own wedding early? Story time. I got married to my husband Steve a week ago. We were having the most amazing day until the speeches happened. Now, I thought it was well known within the wedding community not to do this. But during the best man speech, the best, during the best man speech, he decided to propose. So his girlfriend, Amy, said yes when I tell you all hell broke loose. So from that point on, nobody paid any attention to me or my husband, nor paid attention to any of the event times. People started to eat early. The speeches got cut short. Obviously, everyone was just paying attention to them because he just, like, proposed. And on top of that, and I actually think this is the worst thing that he did, he got the DJ to play his and Amy's song, which then encouraged loads of other couples to do the same thing. For, like, three hours, it just consisted of random couples running to the DJ to get him to play their song. What the fuck? So when it finally came time for me and my husband to have our first dance, because, bearing in mind, we still hadn't done that yet everyone was too exhausted to come and dance with us so we're dancing and just no one was paying attention to us instead just stood at the bar or went to eat so after like several hours of this i told my husband that i just didn't want to be there anymore and to my absolute relief he agreed to so we decided to leave our own wedding the own woo! The only people we decided to say goodbye to was our parents and nobody even noticed that we had left. Here is the problem. So three days later, my cousin rang me. Cousin asked when we left because she didn't get a chance to say goodbye to us. Can I just say, loving what's happening here. I said nobody was paying attention to us and nobody really cared about us. So we just left. And this girl just says, okay, and puts the phone down. Sorry, did I say something out of turn just here? You won't, you just won't guess this. Now we are getting calls from all of our relatives on both sides telling us that we are immature. They say we need to lighten up and that we should be really happy that this is how it all happened. Because our wedding had made people feel so romantic or whatever, Susan. So what do you think? Am I wrong here? My fiance told me he is tired of hiding who he is from me, and now I'm not sure I want to get married. My fiance, 26 male, and I, 25 female, have been dating for three years. We've known each other for eight years and just got engaged a year ago. We are also long distance since he is military, so only see each other for maybe four to five days a month, with the exception of summers, when I move wherever he is to stay with him for a month or two. So throughout the last three years of the relationship, it became very evident that my fiance, let's call him Dave, held some pretty serious prejudices. Examples, he passionately dislikes fat people and would consistently insult strangers and make disparaging jokes about fat people. He prided himself on being an imperialist, proudly called himself a sexist and didn't talk to women unless it was for relationship purposes, said my brother might be treated differently by police because he looks threatening, parentheses, my brother and I are black, Dave is white. Anyways, I addressed all of these things whenever they came up and we had multiple conversations in which he decided it was wrong to hold these beliefs. However, after addressing them, he would get extremely upset if I called him out on saying anything slightly prejudicial throughout the relationship because he would say he doesn't hold these beliefs anymore. Last month, we got into a pretty big argument about why systemic racism is bad. He said it makes the U.S. look bad and it weakens our foreign influence, so therefore it is bad. Whereas I am of the mindset that it is bad because black people, including myself, are human beings and deserve to be treated with an equal amount of dignity, respect, and general decency. This. this argument escalated and he started going on a rant of how tired he is of quote stepping over eggshells around me and how he can never find the right words to make me happy and that he is quote tired of hiding who he is around me. 
This was very shocking. And I tried to probe more on what he was hiding. And basically, he revealed that all of the prejudices I thought he had gotten over, he still had and was just trying to suppress them around me. Mm -hmm. He mentioned one of the things he's tired of hiding is that he still strongly dislikes fat people and doesn't see a problem with that. But I've suspected this has been the cause of a lot of his behavior, such as one, asking me how much I've eaten every day and what time I eat. Don't eat after 8 p.m. Telling me to drink water all the time. Three, insulting my friends for gaining weight. Four, telling his own mother not to eat fatty foods. Five, asking why some people in my family are fat. Six, telling me he doesn't want me to get pregnant because he wants me to be skinny longer. Countless other little things here and there. But whenever I said, do you have a problem with fat people still? He would get defensive and pretend I was imagining it. Again, we're long distance, so I suppose I don't get to see the person he is all the time. But now that he's told me, I feel like I can't trust him. And he's sucking up because he knows I don't want to do this anymore because it feels like a lie. So we are seeing a friend of his for marriage counseling. I put it in parentheses because the guy is not qualified and talks to Dave outside of sessions all the time and even brought his own wife to a session. And now Dave says he's ready to change and leave these prejudices behind. Really this time. Ha! <laughs> I've lost trust and honestly have not felt the same about our relationship since that day. Although he's saying he'll change this time, I'm not sure if he means it or is just trying to placate me into staying in the relationship, then reverting back whenever he feels like he has me. Plus, I believe these prejudices stem from a lack of empathy and insecurity that reflect in other areas, like the way he reacted to the pandemic completely ignored any rules and felt like he could get me sick too because I'm young. Even though I told him I do not want to get sick, I also reminded him that I'm high risk because I have asthma, to which he said, ugh, I forget you're unhealthy. He constantly puts me down for my genes and even explicitly said, my genes are superior to yours. Anyways, he said what I wanted to hear in order to make me feel safe enough to move down for the summer. And when I got there in late March, he didn't want to take any precautions that we had previously discussed. Shock. With all that said, I know that's a lot. Does anyone have advice on what I should do? Question. Growing up, did anybody have that one friend whose mom didn't care about what y'all did at her house? Yeah, I had a friend like that. Um, I was actually talking to her recently. We're reminiscing about middle school and how we would go over to her house and literally do whatever we wanted. So <laughs> we would go over to her house and talk on no mingle. We was low-key getting groomed. It was like a whole thing. We was doing a lot of hoodlum things. But my favorite thing to do at her house was we could go up on her roof and overlook the sky, the stars everything it was just a fun time so i remember one time she invited some more of our friends over at her house it was like the middle of the night like maybe one or two in the morning and we were up on her roof looking at shooting stars just like having a good time drinking we smoking we was doing a lot of things so in the middle of the night where we were sitting at on her roof we were overlooking the backyard and there's obviously houses all along because it's a neighborhood but the neighborhood she lived in all the houses were like foreclosing so i think the neighborhood was actually very empty at this time there was really nobody in these houses right so one of the houses that was literally adjacent to us we we're kind of like looking in its overall direction one of the lights to like one of the bedrooms comes on and we're like did anybody notice that light came on? We're like, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. So I'm asking my friend, I'm like, did, is, does somebody live over there? Because anytime I'm at her house, I was at her house all the time. We'd be on that roof all the time. I never saw any lights in that house. Like, I could have sworn um, the house was abandoned. Like, nobody was in it. And she was, like, looking at me. She was like, yeah, I last I checked, that house doesn't have anybody living there. Like, at all. So we were just like, whatever. Maybe it's, like, somebody breaking in or something like that. Like, we're all giving our little theories on the roof, thinking we're going to witness a crime. <laughs> At this point, the light was on for a while. I think, like, maybe 20 or 30 minutes had gone by, and nobody was, like, in the room. We didn't even see anyone, like, actually turn on a light. So as time's just like going by, it's getting later and later. And I'm like looking at the sky now at this point. Remind, mind you, it's the house is like underneath like where I'm looking at. All of a sudden, I see some lady like standing in front of the window, like looking directly at us. So I'm like, I'm looking at this. Like, I'm like, whoa, hold on. So I'm tapping my friends. I'm like, guys, 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 <laughs> look over there. Look at the window. And they look at the window and they're like, holy shit. Why is that? Who is that? And I, we're all looking at my friend whose house it is. We're like, dude, 
are you sure nobody lives over there? Because there's a lady staring directly at us. And she's like looking and she's like, I don't think I've ever seen that person before in my entire life. And she's, she knows her neighbors. And so the lady starts like waving, like aggressively, just waving, jumping around, just waving, waving around. And we're looking at her like, do you think she needs like, help? What the heck is going on? So then all of a sudden she like leaves the room and goes outside and she's just yelling in front of her house she's just screaming ah! my daughter's friend stole a five thousand dollar watch from my husband and we don't know how to tell her parents our daughter 18 female has been friends with this girl for about eight or nine months and in the last few months she started inviting her over to our house more often because they're classmates and sometimes they have projects to do together well last week she came to our house and my husband 56 male was helping them with the project since they are studying the same thing he studied and at one point my youngest daughter came home with her friends so my eldest daughter and her friend went to my husband's office and according to him he had taken off his watch and left it on the desk and our daughter saw him so he was right but when her friend left the watch was gone and after searching for it throughout the house i 36 female decided to check the security cameras and she took it when she was left alone in the office for less than five seconds oh my god you guys have a 20 year age gap to my surprise, my daughter wasn't surprised because according to her, this is the third time that valuable things have disappeared from our house. The first two times, she stole a pair of gold earrings and a gold necklace from my daughter, and she thought she lost them because honestly, she loses her things all the time. But my daughter is sure that her necklace and earrings were in her jewelry box and that her friend took them. And now my husband and I don't know if we should tell her parents since she has stolen a significant sum of money from our house, and the last thing we want is to get the police involved. We just want our stuff back and help her get help because she clearly has a problem. How can you talk to parents about this without them feeling offended? In total, she stole almost $6,000 from her house, and that's not right. But she's young, and we want to give her another chance. That's why we're not going to involve the police, and that's why we also want to talk to her parents. What would be the correct way to face this situation? So, she has an update. My husband and I decided to talk to her parents, because she lives with them, and we thought telling them was the best thing. Well, according to them, they suspected that she was doing something wrong because she was receiving more and more gifts from my daughter every day, because that's what she said they were. We told them that our daughter only gave her a bracelet and that was a birthday gift, but the rest of the things were never gifted. Unfortunately, they weren't offended and even promised to check her room to see if they could find our things. When they checked her room and her electronics, they found even more things than we thought. She has been stealing things from my house for months to sell them online on a second-hand clothing sales app. At home, we live with four teenagers, 18, 16, 14, and 12 who are constantly exchanging clothes, shoes, and jewelry, and often have arguments because one of them takes something from the other without permission. So, when she stole several of my daughter's clothes, they never suspected it was her. She sold all of the clothes she stole from them and only had my daughter's earrings and necklace, a ring from my youngest daughter, and my husband's watch in her house. According to her, she did that because she wanted to help her father with some debt that he has because she didn't want to have to sacrifice college to reduce expenses. She works as a nanny and sometimes that money wasn't enough to help her family and she noticed that since my daughter wasn't affected by losing jewelry, so she thought about taking them because she needed them more. Her parents confirmed that they have a debt but they would never have thought she would do something like this to help. They apologized and promised to return every penny of the things that were already sold but my husband told them that it was not necessary that her giving us back the jewelry and the watch was enough. She gave us everything back and also apologized, and we told her that this time we were not going to involve the police, but that not everyone would do the same if they caught her stealing again. We also made it clear that she is no longer welcome in our home and that my daughter will finish the project for both of them because we don't want her to be involved with her either. And that is it, and we haven't heard from her since. It's February 1st, and if you need anybody to tell you that the February theory is real, let it be me because it absolutely is. I'm currently sitting outside waiting to get my eyebrows done right now. My man likes when my eyebrows are nice and fresh for my big date tonight. And if you don't know what my big date is, it is my one year first date anniversary with my man. It's not like our official anniversary, but I made an anniversary out of it because it's just special. Anyway, basically what the February theory is, is that what happens in February stays in February. Meaning like if you and your man break up this month, like that's it. Like that is, it's a big month for breakups and ending relationships and ending cycles and vice versa for starting. So if you meet somebody new, you go on a first date, somebody new comes into your life, that might be a thing. They're most likely sticking around. They're going to stay. The February theory is that like, what happens this month with relationships is permanent. And it is no surprise to me that I met my man literally on February 
first. Keep in mind, my thing was always like, as soon as I start talking to someone or meet somebody, like they better ask me out and make plans with me in the next 48 hours or like, I'm gonna be bored. Like, I'm gonna be over this. Like, I'm not gonna be someone's pen pal for weeks. But we actually got set up mid-January and the way it just worked out was that we both were not available for like the next two like weeks like it, it was just kind of hard to like really line up our schedules and it just so happened to turn out that february 1st was the date that worked even though we got set up probably i think around like january 17th or 18th and i'm not kidding when i say i was on dating apps for years and if we matched and you didn't make plans with me for literally that weekend like that was it we never spoke again like i had no time to waste i was always like 48 hour rule if we don't have plans right away then like i'm just not gonna keep talking to you so this was truly like a rare exception so girls let this be your sign let february be your month get out there get on dates meet some guys break up with that dusty man who's not giving you what you want and that relationship and that cycle february is the most important month of the year i saw this video in here about this girl talking about how whenever male cops pull over young women they turn it into some sort of like lecture which is exactly what happened to me and i got pulled over by a trooper on the highway so that was really scary especially since it was like the first time I've ever gotten pulled over and I w it just did not feel real. So he's coming up to my window and I roll it down and he starts talking to me and by to me I mean at me um and he's asking me like why are you going this fast and blah 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 and I'm trying to respond but he's also like interrupting me and talking over me and then he's just like let me just see your license. So he goes back to his little trooper car and I'm like what is the plan of action because like I don't know what to do this is my first time getting pulled over I'm like do I cry? The tears were not forming which is really funny because there's usually tears in there so I decide I'm just gonna plead with him um because the worst he can say is no it's my first offense but whoever said that the worst they can say is no is such a liar because this man popped off on me like the way that he reacted he was just so upset that I would dare to ask that he was like no absolutely not do you know how many people were speeding through here who were going slower than you who I didn't give warnings to and I was like oh wow i was not expecting this reaction um it gets worse because then he goes you're 19 years old you should know better than to do stuff like this and i was like when did you turn into my father but also while we're on the topic yeah 19 just a little girl like please be nice to me so obviously at that point i am crying a little bit too late but i take my ticket um he took the speed down which i guess like was nice um, I never said I was in the right. I was definitely speeding. Never again. So I drove back home going 65 miles per hour on the highway strictly in the right lane, tears streaming down my face in dead silence to punish myself. Um, and the first thing I did when I got home was download Waze. Um, I clearly downloaded it too late, but you know, it saved me so many times. Um, I know there's a lot of Waze haters on this app now, but I love Waze. I don't even speed like that anymore. Like that's not what it saves me from. It's just like I try to avoid cops now because I never want to feel like chastised like that again. Because I was like, why would he, why would he say you're 19 years old? Like, I do tell people like, you're 35 years old, you shouldn't be speeding. No. So that was the fun story about when I got pulled over by a state trooper and do not recommend doing that. But, you know, here we are. Every time I get behind the wheel now, I get so stressed out, which is not good for a nervous driver. But anyway. Am I the astronaut for telling my mom we don't view her eldest as our brother and she needs to stop forcing him on us? All right, here we go. I, 28 male, I'm the youngest of three. Though if you ask my mother, she'd say four. Prior to my eldest brother Christopher's birth, my parents had another baby that was stillborn. His name was James. My parents consistently talked about him. He was included in family portraits where one of us held the only picture we have of him, Christmas cards, etc. He was mentioned at every single big event. My brothers and I have tried to tell our parents that we are uncomfortable with the picture and it's morbid to us, as well as we don't want it included all the time. My mom always insists and tells us that James is family. She also gets upset if I refer to Christopher as my eldest brother or if, if one of us says that we have two brothers. We've tried to explain that we were born after James and don't have the attachment she does. This has led to several arguments and usually it isn't worth it. So we just give in and say fine. She can bring the photo and talk about James there. Christopher is getting married. 
After talking with his fiance Lily, they both said the picture cannot come. They said they'll include James in the program alongside Lily's grandmother, who passed as a sort of guest we are thinking about on this special day. But there will be no detailed essay that her mom usually includes on the holiday cards to memorialize James. She got very upset by both things and called them insensitive. They are sticking to their guns. My mom was venting to me, and I told her I agreed with Christopher and Lily. I said that James isn't here. We have no connection to him, and she can't keep shoehorning him in. You know how many people are probably too young to know what a shoehorn is? That needs to be a test. That She can't expect us to make everything about him. That obviously, she won't be over James's death, but it's time to stop making him front and center. I also added that none of us view James as our brother. She began to cry and left. My dad is angry with me beyond belief, as are some of our other family members. My brothers are on my side, but I need some unbiased perspective. Am I the astronaut? Here are just sometimes my best friends have had to humble me, not even humble me, just like keep me sane. Because I'm a delusional, delusional ass bitch, and I can live in Livy land a lot of the time. But they're good at just like keeping me sane and just like a little reminder, like chill the fuck out, Livy. First situation happened when I was moving to LA and my mattress wasn't coming to the day after I moved. My brain immediately went to, oh my God, that's so fucking awkward. I'm gonna have to hit up one of my California whores and I'm going to have to sleep at their place. I'm like, this is just so fucking tragic. Cause like my mattress isn't here. Like not once did I even think about like my California friends, anything like that. I was just like, Fuck, like I have to go sleep at one of my whore's houses. No, 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 I am making myself sound like such a massive whore and I really need to like relax with that. I have three here that I don't even talk to anymore. I low-key burn bridges with them. Like I'm gonna have to like reach, I'm gonna have to extend an olive branch. Like I'm gonna have to reach the fuck out. I was on the phone with Nicole and I just like briefly mentioned like, ugh, like this mattress situation, I'm probably gonna have to reach out to one of my whores. And Nicole was like, what the fuck? Dude, I'm like deep diving on this too to Nicole. I'm like, that's so awkward. Like I'm not trying to fuck. Like they're gonna think I wanna fuck and I'm like, Oh, that's like so annoying that I'm gonna be like laid up with one of my whores. I was like, what the absolute fuck is wrong with you? She's like, right now is when you choose to budget, bitch. She's like, grow the fuck up. She never said grow the fuck up. She was like, go get a hotel room. The way that I was like, oh my God, she's so right. The way I was genuinely trying to normalize like that it was, I had to just go sleep at one of my whores. I think I subconsciously like probably wanted to do that. Nicole was like, why the fuck would you not go? Like you're more than capable of getting a hotel room. No one said you had to sleep at your whores, mind you. I literally just got an air mattress. Like it was never that deep, but in my head, I was like, oh my God, this is so awkward. Next thing is a reoccurring thing that Sissy and I had to deal with this entire year. I have flight anxiety. I don't fucking love a plane whatsoever. And every single time I flew literally anywhere, I'd be like, Sissy, I think I have to upgrade to first class. Sissy would always be like, literally, no the fuck you don't. But I was like, no, Sissy, I genuinely think the only way I'm gonna get through flight, my flight anxiety is like, upgrading to first class. The way that I was like, yeah, like first class will genuinely cure my flight anxiety, duh. Cause he was like, touch grass, bitch. Like you don't need to upgrade yourself on a flight to fucking New York to Chicago. He's like, why on earth would you up? Why did I just say earth like that? That was literally terrifying. Why the fuck would you upgrade yourself for like a two hour flight? And I was like, I just feel like it'll help my flight anxiety. Oh no, I put too much blush on. Take it from me, you literally only need one dot of this. Like really? Cause what the fuck? I look like, oh my God, this is like the redness I've been trying to hide my whole life. Hold on, I'll fix it. Cause you know, I had that talk anytime I was about to get on a plane. I was like, should I just do it? She was like, no, literally don't do that. Oh my God, the next one I thought was such a brilliant idea and they humbled me so fucking quickly. Every year for my birthday, we do a trip. And by every year, I mean, starting like last year, I decided I'd take all my friends on a trip with me. Even though my birthday is like five months away, I like to plan it. Like I like to have an idea of where I think we're gonna go. So like some of my ideas this year, I really wanted to do like Napa Valley or like Jamaica makeup and I'm telling Sissy and Nicole this and like yeah like good options and then I'm like what about Dubai or like how the fuck did you get from Napa Valley to Dubai and I was like no I think it could be a vibe us all going to Dubai to be fair on my end the idea came about because I was like a little bit obsessed with Dubai bling and I was like oh my god like we would kill it there like a solid day I was like Dubai is where we're going for my birthday they were like absolutely fucking not but for an entire day which is like a really long time in my world I was set on taking all of us to Dubai I was like we're going to Dubai they're like Libby that's like a 14 hour flight I'm like who gives a fuck we're celebrating my big two five in Dubai. And then I looked at flights. I was like, oh my God. They were like, you want everyone to travel 15 hours for your fucking birthday? And I was like, okay, you guys might have a point. Like I was in, I was a little delusional. I love being a delusional bitch, but you do need, well, I specifically need the people in my life that have to be like, Livy, no. And that is Sissy and Nicole.